you know, as we all know, you know, we're Americans. We know America has long struggled uh, with the whole uh, all men are created equal thing uh, that we put there in that uh, document there. Seems like every decade or so, we as a nation need to ask ourselves, you know, uh, all, all, all men? Really? All? <laughs> Black people, Asians, everybody? Really? All? <laughs> Eskimos? Seriously? Well, lately, Muslims have been subject to the equal people test, and, well, there's good news and bad news. It's the subject of our new Islamic affairs segment, Halal Things Considered. <laughs> Let's start with the good news. Justices ruled in favor of a young Muslim woman who was rejected from working at the clothing store Abercrombie & Fitch. She wore hijab to the job interview and was denied a job because the headscarf violated the retailer's look policy. She won! She won! It was disappointing that she was put in that position, but she, she won. She stood up against discrimination, and she triumphed, and as a reward for her brave struggle, I am proud to say that she can now work at Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> I, uh, oh. uh... She has won the right to spend eight hours a day in a cloud of cologne selling pink polo shirts to guys named Chad. <laughs> so winning the right to work in a pseudo-sex shop is perhaps a pyrrhic victory. But that's not the bad news. Claims of discrimination why a Muslim woman says she was denied an unopened can of soda at 30,000 feet. She basically was trying to say that I would use a can of soda as a weapon. Uh, okay. Sounds bad, but look, you take that soda, you add Alka-Seltzer and a seagull, and <laughs> y y you've got yourself a bomb on an airplane. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a reason that they don't let you bring seagulls on airplanes. <laughs> That's <laughs> weird when the seagull blows up there, the appendages stay intact. <laughs> now, you can agree or disagree with the airline's policy on distribution of unopened cans, but are we really sure this is discrimination? She asked the man next to me what he would like to drink, and he requested a can of beer, and she, you know, I noticed that she placed it in front of him, and it was a closed can. Uh, beverage can. Okay, okay. Seems like a double standard. But if you think about it, when has a white guy pounding beers <laughs> on an airplane ever led to violence? It's just... <laughs> I'm, I'm being told almost every time. Uh, <laughs> almost, almost every time. Well, this, this sounds like a horrible experience, but as with any situation involving a major airline, it, it could always get worse. I asked the passengers around me, I said, did anyone witness what you just said to me? And I said, you know, how dare you say that I would use it as a weapon? And then a man sitting, you know, uh, across from me said, you Muslim, you need to shut the F up. That is, it, I am shocked at what goes on in coach. I mean, <laughs> really. Am I right? I mean, it's, can't you just say, can't you just say to the person, come on, sir, calm down, the Sundays will be out any minute, along with the live music, Frank Sinatra. You know, in Coach, he's still dead, but in First, <laughs> fly me to the moon. Well, if there was any ambiguity about whether or not this incident had a discrimination component, old F-bomb Johnson settled that. At least now the flight attendant will shut that down. There's no bystander intervention, and the flight attendant is, has, didn't say anything to him either. Oh. I feel badly for this woman. For more, we're joined by senior religious correspondent Hassan Minaj. Hassan! Thank you for joining us. Hassan, this is a, 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 a shocking story. This, uh, uh, Tara Ahmed was, was on a flight. Uh, she's an American citizen, uh, I think is an interfaith... Uh, conductor at Northwestern, Northwestern University. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how does she not have the right and freedom to enjoy one of our 12 ounces of uh, delicious yet corrosive sugar water? You know, John, actually, the airline did the right thing. You can't risk passenger safety just to give in to one woman's crazy demands. She asked for, Hassan, she asked for a can of soda. Oh, huh. okay, John. You mean a carbonated grenade, all right? You throw that at someone, bam, they are out like a trout. You've just then thrown away your one weapon, and then you're... Yeah. 
but then you ask the flight attendant for another can of soda. <laughs> 198 soda cans later, the plane is yours. I mean, <laughs> even less if it's a commuter flight. Yeah, Hassan, I didn't realize that, that, that Muslims were, were sort of soda can MacGyvers. It's oh. a very interesting. Oh, we're crafty. You're crafty? We are crafty. are crafty. I didn't realize that. Yes. Anything on a plane is a weapon to a Muslim, all right? The corner of a Dorito chip can slice a neck. <laughs> All right, you think that seat cushion is a flotation device? You are wrong. That is a smothering pillow. You see a sky mall, I see a paper cut katana. Look, I... <laughs> the, 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 this woman wasn't trying to take over the plane. She was just, she was wearing a scarf. She was, that's all it. <laughs> around her head. Yeah. I... Scarf around the head is way scarier than scarf around the neck. Big difference, okay? <laughs> Allow me to demonstrate using uh, just a little prop here. Um, this is a standard scarf right here, okay? So sure. this is a scarf, okay? okay. Yeah. This is good, okay? This is good? Okay. Not good, okay? <laughs> All right, not good. Good, not good, okay? Yeah. All right, fun. Yeah, that's Scary, fun. Scary. What? Right? Okay. This says, this right here just says, I'm Audrey Hepburn, gallivanting around the plaza. This says, I'm here to kill Audrey Hepburn <laughs> while she gallivants around the but plaza. I don't think that's the case. That's six inches. But this is, let me tell you something, but this is, this is America from everything that I, that I have learned about America. We love people of faith. That's what we love. You are absolutely right. If it is the right one. Now, there is a hierarchy of faith in this country. Up top, we got evangelical, right? Mm -hmm. Then Catholic, Jewy but not too Jewy. We're third, okay. All right? Miscellaneous non-Muslim, Scientology, devil worship. <laughs> Then right down here is Muslim. Oh, that are, so are Muslims just supposed to hide their faith? Is that the idea? That's, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's a great idea, which leads me to my next segment, Minaj's Muslim Makeover. That's a really, really pretty graphic. You like it? Yes, I do. I've been working on the branding. All right. All right. Anyway, step number one, change your name. What? Now, <laughs> just... this is a serious all thing, right. all right? Look, if you're Muhammad, go by Mo. Soma. <laughs> Your name is Sal. Fatima, your name is now Craig. Craig? <laughs> this seems humiliating, Hassan. It is. Call me Cody, John. All right. Step two. Now, if you're a man, you gotta follow my lead here and hide your beard. You don't have a beard. On the outside. My beard <laughs> is actually on the inside of my mouth. I'm constantly choking, John. Now. If you're a Muslim woman flying on a plane, things get a bit more complicated. Sure. You gotta change okay. the game a little bit. First things first, you gotta ditch your hijab. Now, okay. that's gonna expose your hair, so you're gonna have to change that too, okay? Okay, so, all, all right. right, there we now. go. We're getting there, we're getting there. Now, uh -huh. the next step is getting rid of all those clothes. Remember, covered in fabric means covered in secrets. So wear something a little bit more America-loving. That's the okay. ticket, that's the ticket. Now, that's a Muslim that gets an unopened can of soda. All right.